M Art Productions presents Just a Kid from Washington Heights. Gustav Ebenstein is 20 years old in 1940, as the United States emerges from the Great Depression. I went to grade school there and George Watson High School, which I barely graduated in 1938. It was a miracle. Went to work for odd jobs in uh, midtown Manhattan, and I was really getting nowhere. One year and five months before Pearl Harbor and America's entry into World War II, Gus Ebenstein enlisted in the newly minted U.S. Army Air Force. The United States Army Air Force, formerly the U.S. Army Air Corps, a force of some 20,000 in 1940, rapidly swelled to 2.2 million before war's end. I thought it was a good opportunity to join the United States Air Force and uh, become an airplane mechanic. You had to figure it was an up and coming thing. So uh, I don't know how I got the guts to do something like this, never having left home and talked my mother and father into it from a nice little quiet Jewish family. I studied a little and uh, took an exam and I never was a, a PFC, I never was a corporal. Uh, I became Sergeant Gus Evanstein and at that time I was the crew chief of an AT-6. But the ambitious mechanic became eager to fly the planes he had learned to service so competently. Yet, before he could enter flight school, Gus must pass a series of comprehensive and formidable written and physical examinations. I barely got out of high school. Nobody, even a college professor, could finish this thing. I did pass it, because that's why we are all here right now. You really needed like a couple of years of college. I mean, that was, the, that was one of the requisites. I passed the damn thing. We had A-20 airplanes we were equipped with. When I got in it, it was so fast and so powerful and so maneuverable and so forgiving. I fell in love with it. Sometimes, uh, if the conditions were just right, uh, the feeling that you could get, uh, especially flying that Douglas a20 Havoc, which the British call the Boston Bomber. They weren't a big name airplane like the B-17 or the B-24 or a Lightning or a Spitfire. It was a light bomber and it flew like a pursuit plane. And in the right conditions, it was a dream. It was very responsive. It's like an 18-year-old girl that you stroked. March 3rd, we were scheduled to fly our first mission. And that was like soaring, I tell you, that was, that was something different. And it was like a nightmare. Come on, you guys, get out of that plane. Bail out. I mean, for it's somebody new at this in the 36th, yeah, we were virgin sturgeon. There were B-17s coming out without wings. The 61st mission, as I had my rudder almost ripped off the plane. 62nd mission, the fuselage was all beat up. And the 64th mission, a burst, there was a burst right near my head and a piece of flak went right through and missed my head by about one inch. Nevertheless, in spite of 65 perilous combat missions over enemy-occupied territory, Gus returned home safely in 1945, only to surrender the remainder of his life without even the slightest sign of a struggle. On May 22, 1945, I was late for work. I was walking up 
190th Street up to St. Nicholas Avenue to get to the subway. And as I got to the corner, Gus was walking up St. Nicholas. And he said, hi, Marie. I didn't know who he was, but he was delicious. He was in his uniform. He was absolutely gorgeous. We rode down the subway together, talking all the way. I felt like we were on a little island, just the two of us. And he asked me out for lunch. And I went to work. I was nutty all day in the office. And my girl in the office says, what's the matter with you? I says, I don't know. I feel so excited. She says, you act like you never were out with a guy before. I said, this is different.